Welcome to BBC News, broadcasting to viewers in North America and around the globe. I'm Regid Ahmed, our top stories. The search for survivors intensifies in Mexico City after an earthquake kills over 200 people. Hurricane Maria knocks out power to the whole of Puerto Rico, isolating more than 3 million. A day after President Trump called Iran a corrupt dictatorship, President Rouhani tells the UN his country will not be intimidated. And human life and how it all starts. For the first time in the UK, scientists use gene editing on an embryo. Hello and welcome. In central Mexico, teams of rescue workers are continuing to search for survivors after a powerful earthquake claimed at least 200 lives. Dozens have been saved from the ruins of buildings which collapsed over 24 hours ago. But the nation is mourning 21 children who were killed when their primary school collapsed. Many others are still missing. Almost half of the deaths were in the densely populated capital, Mexico City, where power lines and gas pipes have been cut. The magnitude of the earthquake was measured at 7.1 and the epicentre was around 120 kilometres south of the capital. Our correspondent Ali McBool is in Mexico City where the rescue work is continuing. Well, our correspondent Regini Vajanathan is also in Mexico City. She sent this report before nightfall. Regini Vajanathan there. Now, a curfew has been imposed across the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico as it struggles to deal with the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. The island is now without power after the Category 5 storm hit the U.S. territory. It brought wind speeds of up to 225 kilometres per hour, although the storm has weakened slightly as it moves across the island. The U.S. Virgin Island of St. Croix has also been hit. Communications with the island of Dominica remain largely cut off, but aerial photographs show flattened buildings and fallen trees. Our correspondent Will Grant is in Puerto Rico and sent this update. At the United Nations in New York, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Iran's foreign minister have held talks on the nuclear deal with Tehran. Javad Zarif and the European Union's foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, defended the nuclear deal between Iran and world powers. Ms Mogherini said Iran was in full compliance of the agreement. Donald Trump has said the agreement was the worst deal ever signed. Well, earlier the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, said his country will respond decisively and resolutely if the United States walks away from the nuclear deal. Well, let's take a look at some of the other stories making the news. Police in the UK have detained a sixth man in connection with last week's attempted bomb attack on a London tube train. In the last few hours, officers arrested a 17-year-old man in South London. Earlier, two men were arrested under the Terrorism Act in South Wales. The manager of England's women's football team, Mark Sampson, who's been embroiled in allegations of racism and bullying, is to step down. The 34-year-old left his role after evidence emerged of inappropriate and unacceptable behaviour during his time at a training academy. Spain's Prime Minister has urged Catalan separatists to respect the law after protests were held in Barcelona against government attempts to halt an independence referendum. The leader of the Catalan government accused the central government of coordinated aggression after 14 Catalan officials were detained for organising the referendum. Our correspondent Tom Burridge spoke to some of those taking part in the pro-independence demonstrations. Well, stay with us on BBC News still to come. His art now fetches record prices. A new exhibition celebrates the wild world of Jean-Michel Basquiat. This is BBC News, the latest headlines. A powerful earthquake has killed more than 200 people in Mexico in the capital. The search for survivors in collapsed buildings is continuing, including at a primary school. And Hurricane Maria has torn a path of destruction across Puerto Rico. Flooding and severe winds have knocked out power to the island. Well, let's just get more on our top story. We can speak to Eric Garcia Barber. He lives in one of the neighbourhoods in Mexico City that was damaged by the earthquake. Eric, can you tell us what your neighbourhood looks like at the moment? 
Uh, well, some areas are okay, but as you come closer to the places where actually uh, there were their buildings collapsed. You can't actually, you can't go go there. Uh, me and my family, my wife and my baby went to try to to help if in, in any way to bring some groceries and some um, gloves and protection. And we weren't able to access to not even to the closest area, but to the surroundings area. Fortunately, there's several hands, lots of hands working out uh, trying to help the people that are actually inside the, the collapsed buildings. The, the neighborhood so far, this specific area is, is okay, but some areas uh, in the south of Mexico City or a little bit going north, like about five or 10 minutes away from here, you can see buildings collapsed. This is uh, this is not real. I mean, um, you never experience or never think that you're going to have a replica of what happened on 1985. I mean, it's not. it wasn't as devastating, but this is like a dream. You don't believe this is real. Eric, you do still uh, sound quite shocked more than 24 hours after this earthquake. And you mentioned that you have also been trying to help We've been hearing that there's been a huge volunteer effort alongside rescue officials. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Oh, actually, one of my colleagues from work, he was helping out last night. And I was having communication with him this morning. And he told me that he, he's like, you have no idea the feeling when you see somebody coming out from the collapsed buildings. My, my colleague told me that he was about to cry because there were three people rescued and another people afterwards. And this feeling is unbelievable. Uh, as, as you were saying, several people are working hard. We were trying to provide some help, but well, thank God there's too many people, Mexican people and people from abroad are working and helping us out, which this is the help that we actually need. Eric, as the rescue and recovery efforts continue, what is the main concern in the city at the moment? Are people worried about tremors or are they worried about access to food and water? Well, the main concern right now is having access to the primary school. Um, about 20 plus boys, kids, uh, are were were rescued, but still people, kids died in there. So this is the main focus. Some other buildings collapsed, but this is the main focus because you never think that this can happen to kids, but this is unfortunately real life. And Eric, we are keeping across that rescue in the primary school that you're, you've been speaking about, but thank you very much for your time and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. And I can only finish with one final thought that Mexico is in pain where this is, uh, this is a really hard experience and 200 people or more than that have died. Thank you very much for, uh, for being here, for providing this information. And we can, you know, if people can keep praying, that'd be, that'd be great. Eric Garcia, a resident living in one of the neighborhoods affected in Mexico City. Well, for the first time in the UK, scientists have altered the DNA of human embryos. The research using a technique known as gene editing was performed at the Francis Crick Institute in London. It's aimed at increasing understanding of the first days of human development. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, reports. Now, before Banksy, there was Basquiat, a graffiti artist who became a sensation in the art world. Now, the first large-scale exhibition of his work is going on show. Will Gompertz reports. Stay with the BBC World News.